So I've been working on my simulator again, the CRJ700 from Aerosoft, and I've noticed I've ran into a couple of issues that I've had to get some workarounds on, and one of them is the actual flaps. Um, getting these flaps to move right there with an analog uh, potentiometer. And um, if you watch my previous video, I actually created a joystick controller using a Arduino Micro, and then allowed the game controller utility built into Windows to recognize it as a game controller. And then you could go into prepared and actually assign the, assign the axes for it um, like you would any other joystick. However, with Flight Sim 2020, you're not able to do that with the CRJ700. Uh, it's, it's restrictive in, in how you can basically go in and configure that flap, the flaps using an analog uh, potentiometer. The same with the uh, throttle and spoilers and so forth. So I'm going to show you uh, the way that I was able to resolve it. Uh, before doing that, I did jump on some of the forums and I was reading. And this is a common issue. Here's one that said, I really like the CRJ so far. It flies and looks great. Well done. I found the documentation on how to calibrate your throttles in the EFB and got them calibrated perfectly, which I'll talk about in my next video. However, there is no option to calibrate the distance of travel of your flaps and spoiler levels on the throttle quadrant. Okay, I have two Logitech throttles, so the outermost levers are spoilers on the left and flaps on the right. And as you go through this, same problem on that one, this answers I don't even want to go there um, because we believe this topic has been answered. And anyhow, let's jump over to there. So we'll jump over to this one. Again, the same question. And it goes on and talks about how um, regarding the AP, this tutorial, uh, <laughs> let's hope it will be supported soon. It just says it's not supported. And uh, is there a solution regarding this? Uh, keyboard commands. There is no official way to get these functions triggered right now, okay? So I'm just going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about how I was able to do it. Before doing that, I'm going to go up to my whiteboard and just uh, explain a couple of things. So we're going to set up a potentiometer, which is an analog, which is going to send an analog signal over to Moby Flight Controller. And then Moby Flight Controller, that's going to be um, considered... Uh, well, I'll show you how I set that up and then it's going to go from Moby Flight and we're going to go off and we're going to trigger an FSUIPC um, command and then the FSUIPC command is going to go over to Flight Simulator 2020 and trigger the actual um, flaps working. I'm going to show you how we accomplish that. First I want to just show you the uh, product working. That's the flaps and this is the lever. I'm just going to grab this lever here. And you can see how I can rotate it all the way through. I'm gonna go halfway. You'll see it's halfway. I'm gonna go all the way down, all the way down. So I'm gonna show you what I did to accomplish that. Um, in order to do this, uh, the way that I set it up, you're gonna first need to create an LVAR file and list, and this is the, these are your variables that are associated with the aircraft. If you're curious as to which one runs this um, throttle here, there's this little way that you can do this, a little cheater way, but you could go to Tools, you can go to Behaviors, and then I go to Local Variables, and then from here I can type in here to filter it. Um, we're going to do Flaps, okay? And this will pull up all the variables associated with Flaps. So I can keep this open, and then I can toggle this, back and forth. Like, let me go in here and I'll grab the flaps and I'll move them. Come on, you can move them. See if I can get this over. Um, come on, flaps. Here, I'll just do it this way. So as you see them moving, you'll see that there's a counter here. See that it goes to zero, one, two, three, four. Now those are the those are four positions that actually ends on five and that's associated with the variable ASCRJ underscore flaps underscore set. So the first thing I do is I come over here and I'm gonna add that right into my uh, macro file. And I named this macro file CRJ center pedestal with underscores. 
and I put that in there as number 77. And you'll see that, that what we want to do is we want to trigger this. We want to set the variables as they're feeding into the software so that we can replicate the one, two, three, four, five. So once you have that file set up and you save that into your FSUIPC folder, you'll see mine is sitting right there. Um, then you're ready to get started. Okay, so now this is where the fun actually begins. We know which variable we're gonna use, right? So now I'm gonna close that down and we're gonna get into the actual aircraft and Moby Flight. So I'm gonna go over to Moby Flight and I'm gonna set up first, I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna go to settings and we are going to jump over to our Arduino board. This is an Uno and I set up um, a throttle right here called throttle one and this is an analog. So when I add, went to add this in devices right here, I set it up as an, uh, as an analog input. So that means it's going to use a analog potentiometer that has no digital, you know, it, it's going to measure the digital because we're sending uh, voltage into it and reading what's coming out of it, much like a guitar, the volume on a guitar. Uh, as long as that guitar is plugged in, it's pushing juice through it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set that up as an analog and we're going to assign it a pin. And if you watch some of my other videos, I explain how to how the potentiometers work and how you can set them up with the joystick controller. It's the same way with this. You just wire them to the board. Uh, go Google it. It's really easy. There's three wires. One's a ground. One is the power going in and one's the power going out. And that's what we're measuring. Now you'll notice I... Uh, you can adjust the sensitivity and play around with it so that when it's throwing those five steps, if you remember when we were watching the variable and it was going one, two, three, four, five, you can adjust this until you get it dialed in. But once you've added that, I've added throttle one to pin number A2. Okay, once I've done that, I go ahead and hit okay. And then I'm gonna come down here uh, to input. See where it says input? You have an output and an input. I'm going into the input. Because again, if you look up here, we're gonna go into Moby Flight. So the first thing I do is I set up an input and it's gonna, and I scan for the device right here and it's going to find the one that I set up called flaps right there. Now, when I select flaps from the dropdown or I scan it and move the flaps, I want to go ahead and select right here. This is one that you may or may not have ever used, but it's called Moby Flight Variable, okay? So basically what we're saying is the, the variable is a number that's constantly changing, right? So we, we wanna use an at symbol right here because it's gonna capture whatever variable is coming from that potentiometer and it's gonna put it into this at symbol. And that's all we're doing right here is we're just feeding. So we're just feeding that analog signal into uh, Moby Flight. And, that, and we're getting the value from it. That's what we're doing right now. See how simple that is? And then we're gonna go ahead and hit okay once we have that set up. Now the next step we wanna do is if I, we wanna come over here to output configurations because now we wanna send it out of Moby Flight. We want to send it into Moby Flight to read it, and then we want Moby Flight to interpret it and then send it out to the simulator. So we're going to create an output configuration, and it's going to be called Flaps. And I'm going to click right here, and this is where you're, you're going to want to slow down and pause and watch what I do. The very first thing that comes up is Sim Variable, because remember we set it up as a variable. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna select from the drop-down flaps, and I, then I'm gonna leave this tab like this, and you're done, okay, at that point. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to, dis okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to display. And in display, there's two options here, on press and on release, or on change. We wanna select on change, okay? Now, once you've done that, it's going to say on the change, meaning as those numbers are changing, what's happening? And we want to say we're going to go ahead and send this to an FSUIP Lua macro. So I'm going to click Lua macro. And then in this case, this is how that macro is written in. The CRJ underscore center underscore pedestal colon L 
colon, and then the name of the variable. If you remember that file I set up, let me come over here, is called CRJ Center Pedestal Macro, right? It ends with .mcro. If I open that up, it starts with macro and it has each macro defined. Now remember how we found the name for the macro. So now we're gonna go down and we are going to assign it. So we're gonna, this is gonna look immediately into that FSUIPC directory and it's gonna find the file called CRJ underscore set it center pedestal. And then it's gonna look in that file to find this variable. And if we open up that file again, let me just jump back over here. I wanna show you something. Let me uh, drop down and let me go back up here. Okay, I'm gonna open this up. If you go to that file, and you'll see that the word set is in there. It's not a toggle because it's assigning the value from that analog signal into that variable. So let's think of that variable as a bucket and we're gonna, we're gonna load the bucket up with the numbers that are being fed through that analog uh, potentiometer. So now, it's, now you got this bucket sitting there and we're gonna tell it right here that any time that the changes are happening, we want to assign that into this flaps, right? It's gonna feed it in there. And, and we're gonna be reading that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to compare now. This is real important. So that's all you do on that one is you set it up like this and name it the same if, you're, uh, if your macros are named like mine and then put the variable in here and I showed you how to get that variable. All right, so once that's done, that one's done. So you've got one tab done. You've got the second tab done. Now this is where it gets really fun. So we're gonna hold, I'm gonna cancel that real quick. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna move this and we're gonna watch what happens. See that? See how I move it? See how it says right here, 44, 39, 28. So as I'm moving it through the start and stop position on that potentiometer, I'm getting a different value. And these values will change because they're not gonna be static set variables. They're gonna change as they step up from like the 20s to the 30s to the 40s to the 50s, right? And so uh, so as they step up, we need to look at the range that's, that's associated with each step. So we know there's five steps. So I'm gonna go inside here now, and this is where it, this comes into play. This is interpolation, interpolation. Polish, hopefully I said that right, I'm going to apply it. And what that's basically going to say is any time that the variable that's being sent through the potentiometer equals 25, because look at what I'm doing here. I'm looking at the highest number and the lowest number. So in each case that I do it, I can do this multiple times. I can keep doing this over and over again and keep doing it. And then I can look at an average and I can say, okay, the lowest number is 25 and the highest number is uh, 45. So once you've done that enough and you know where your highs and lows are, then you're gonna wanna come inside here and you're gonna wanna specify the range. So if you look at this one, this starts at 25, and then I'll just go down 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and I go all the way down to the highest range, which, which I read, which was 57, and the lowest range, 25. And then I broke these up into, into sections. So it starts out that anything from 25 up to 30, is it assigns it a zero. And then anything from 31 to 35, a one. And then 36 to 40, it goes up, uh, 40, it goes to a three. And then, and I still need, and I'm gonna make more adjustments. I just set this up, but you can see how it goes to four and then it goes to five. So you can literally, um, assign all five of those positions based upon the range of motion that your potentiometer is providing. Is it gonna be exact? Well, no, this might be a 25, it might be a 26, but if it's close to that range, then you know that any number in that range needs to be that first position on the uh, actual um, flaps. So we come back over here now, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna go over to tools I'm gonna go over back to behaviors and we have it there. And now I'm gonna go all the way down and you're gonna see it's five and it's all the way down there. See that? And now I'm gonna go all the way up and it's zero. And as I move through each step, you're gonna see it move through five, four, and let me go zero, one, wait, zero, sorry. 
and then it, then it, then three, then four, then five. So as you do that, you can you can play around. Um, and this is where I'm at right now is just calibrating it. But you go inside the actual uh, micro, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mean, Mobi Flight, and you just adjust this as you calibrate it until it's right exactly where you want it. So the first one's always going to be in the first position, the second one, and so forth, up to the five positions of the CRJ. So what we basically have done by using this model here where we use the analog signal and then we fire off um, an, uh, an FSU, uh, uh, LVAR um, using the FSU APC um, directory and that with the LVARs assigned the aircraft, we actually found them there. And then we send that into Flight Sim 2020. And we have accomplished now the assignment of moving that up and down and you can adjust it however you want. See that? And that hopefully will solve some of the concerns that's on the forum about how to do this. And, um, Hopefully this isn't too much over your head. Just take it one one bite at a time and you're gonna have a really good experience, I believe, with doing it this way until there's a better method. This is a, this is a method you can use to accomplish that um, and still be able to run your throttles on your simulator, I mean, your, your flaps on your simulator. Hope you enjoyed this, guys. Um, as always, Give this video a huge thumbs up if this helped you. Um, also, share it if with any of your sim enthusiasts or if you're running any websites or blogs or, or you're even running some channels and you want to mention it in it, feel free to uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, and I just hope you guys uh, have, a, have it a little bit easier because of this video. I know it took me probably 10 hours to figure all this out. <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe I can save you that time. So... Uh, enjoy. Again, thumbs up. Uh, let me know if there's any questions below and I'll try to answer it. Thanks.